What's up there, Corey? What's up there, Michael? How you doing? Oh, you know, cabin fever. Yeah. I lose things just so I can go on journeys to try and find them in this Dude, small house. I went out and got food and just sat in my car and just enjoyed being out of this apartment. I got my quarantine hair going. I need a haircut. Undone. <laughs> I can just shower. imagine people in like other cars. What is that? What is he doing in there? No, because everyone's really doing it too. Oh. <laughs> There's a yeah, lot of people. They're like going to bars and honking if they like like uh, the dances yeah. and stuff. And yeah, there's a lot of that going on. I yeah. saw that there was like a whole car of pe- like a row of people. They're yeah, all honking multiple rows signs. honking because the some sort of music was being played into the radio or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Man, people are getting weird out there. It was in Europe, so oh, if that this, gives you any insight. This was right outside, like on the street we live in. Oh, yeah, I see. yeah. Um, we watched, uh, I, I would say a good movie. It was a very entertaining movie. Which one? The Gentleman. Is that what we're talking about? By Guy Ritchie. I got notes for, uh, the other movie we watched too. Yeah, it's okay. Well, we'll skip that one. Pivot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to uh, talk about extraction too. But that's for another episode. Um, so I, I know like a fair amount, uh, a fair bit about Guy Ritchie and I guess what we both know about him is he directed Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. That was his first movie. 2007. Six. 1998. What? Yeah. My facts are wrong. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels? That's a 90s movie. It looks great. Oh, I, I don't have the year on here. I'm just opening my book. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. I thought you like, wrote it down. It's like, I don't know where you got your information. I put Lock, Stock, and Barrel, but I didn't write the year down. Yeah, they say with directors, like the first movie they come out with is kind of indicative of their their style and their theme throughout the rest of their movies. And then, you know, as your budget gets bigger and you get more big name actors yep. and it just... Um, it gets big, uh, and it gets different, and the the director is more able to. You carry the same vision all the way through, and I think we see that with a lot of famous directors. Like, well, you get more leeway, right? Like, you're trusted more to like handle what you're in charge of instead of someone having some sort of or oversight over you. So as soon as you kind of yeah. get over that hurdle, like, all right, he knows kind of what he's doing. Like, yeah. kind of the opposite of M Night Shyamalan. He needs more. I'm he just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, and he's got a dude. M Night Shyamalan like had. Like, The Sixth Sense is, like, a good movie. Like, holds up. You watch it nowadays, you're like, this is kind of entertaining. Yeah. Even if you know the ending or whatever, you right. know, what's going on. Um, and then what the hell happened to all the other movies since then? You didn't like um, The Village? Uh, I have not seen it all the way through. Um, the parts I did see was very, like, okay, so my problem was I watched Scary Movie 3 or whatever that made fun of The Village before I watched The Village. So there's no way I was going to take it seriously. I've never seen a scary movie. It's just parodies. They're they're funny. Oh, I know what they are, but I don't. I, parodies are dumb to me most yeah. of the time. Well, no, the, none of them SNL does up. the good ones, but those movies were, yeah. They're you're not like oh that was a classic of American cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the American Pie movies. No, nobody ever talks about those type of comedies. Not anymore. But, but in the day, they were like almost like a coming of age movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like Gen X. Everybody's uh, like. Yeah, the movie to, to go to college to, you know? Like, this is what it's going to be like. Or, or leave home or, like, yeah. get married, like American Pie, American Wedding. Yeah. Or, yeah, American Wedding. Yep. Yeah. I did see those movies. Yeah. They were, like, entertaining at the time, but yeah. if you watch them now, they're they're not, like... Just boobs. Good comedies that hold up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most comedies don't really hold up, I guess. It's like most nah. stand-up specials don't really hold up. That guy that died this year, uh, Airplane. What is his name? I, I won't know it. But, Damn it. Um, his movies hold like Airplane's still hilarious. Yeah. 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 One of the few. I think there are. I think there are comedy classics. Yeah. You watch. You uh, did you watch Fun with Dick and Jane? Yeah, I yeah. like. I like Jim Carrey though. Yeah. A lot. Almost. His early stuff is really good. I mean, I think we've talked about this yeah, before. Yeah. Right? Liar, liar. Holy shit. I can watch that movie over and over again. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I just watched. I just randomly put it on the other day on my second monitor and just watched the first thirty minutes, forty five minutes was just entertaining. Yep. Yeah. This movie had some comedic moments. Yeah, this movie. I was I was dying laughing, although I was a little bit intoxicated. Yeah. Vodka. Russian water. It'll do it. Figured is it appropriate for an English movie? I don't have that much uh, malt liquor, so. What's an English uh, drink? Just pints. Pints, yeah. You <laughs> just have Guinness. Couldn't pound the pints. Yeah. I don't even know if Guinness is English. I think it is. 
Could be Irish, I guess. I don't know. You know, well, you know this, but I lived in England. Yep. Growing up, my earliest memories. I was actually like, was reminded of when because I listened to our first episode on Spotify. Spotify. Go check you wanna, out. You want to do a plug right now? Yeah. We gotta <laughs> search Michael Coolman because it's under Coolman Productions. If you, or if you type in Coolman and Corey Show, uh, Coolman and Corey Movie, movie Show. show. Um, I list out all the episodes, and it sounds good, looks good, and uh, we've got 25 episodes uploaded, and I'm trying to get it on iTunes. iTunes has a um, like review process, so I had to submit one episode to see if um, I don't know what they're reviewing, but how many curse words did you issue? Uh, you know, how many political polarizing topics did you cover? It's not for us. A normal amount. <laughs> I wouldn't say excessively, but um, but anyway, so this movie, Guy Ritchie. Uh, he had a lot of flops, like a lot of bad movies. Um, so he had Snatch, Sherlock Holmes, Aladdin, and The Man from Uncle. Those are just like five of the ones that I recognized that I had familiar with. And also King Arthur, 2017. Yeah. Yep. So I really liked King Arthur. I did too. It was entertaining enough. For me, it was like a five, mo- uh, five out of five. That's the one where he has like a magic sword right and he like saves them in the beginning that he saves the the kingdom yeah he's like a peasant so oh he yeah then he goes into that area and he like pulls the sword out and yeah and the yeah. whole the whole theme of that movie is if you're a king and it's your destiny to become a king like he went to uh the slums like the the poor part of the of the city and he still became like a king in his own right there and then he um, challenged the the fake king, right. who who kicked him out by, you know, getting the sword out of the the stone and and uh, defeating the the evil, the evil king who was played by some guy who's a like a really good actor. I forget his name, but he played that part really well. Hmm. Um, and that's just a huge like CGI, a CGI movie, huge budget, and they actually planned on making it uh, six total movies. They were gonna have a whole like arc. This was like majorly into the Marvel. they were gonna spread this movie out over six movies no, or just like like five more sequels after. Uh, they were gonna set up a, a, a like king arthur and the knights of the round table yeah. set of movies and they spent so much money on king arthur and then it flopped it just bombed uh, and it got like moderate reviews right which i don't get but same with uh, ben hur up there like those two movies i thought were really good i'm walking to the theater like pumped up like dude that wasn't, wasn't that awesome and just did make it I wasn't guess. a shared opinion yeah yeah um, so I watched a, a Joe Rogan uh, interview uh, with Guy Ritchie, and it was very interesting. You get a real good insight in the director, and he shows up in a suit, and he, his whole thing is in the interview. In the interview, okay. very comfortable suit. This is I, I've chosen. He goes on. You know, they talk for three hours on that podcast, and as um, you tend to do on uh, Joe Rogan yeah. pod, <laughs> and you just you get to know so much about people because, like, I just love it that. You show up and, and talk to someone, you're giving like an interview, and it's usually like 5, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, very rigid. It's just not the case with Joe Rogan Experience. That's why he's done so well. And so, you know, two hours in, you get to talk about like deep into the philosophy of um, who he claims to be. He claims to be like he's a storyteller. He's so good at that. He's so good at like not letting dead air go, kind of like go to waste, or he'll like push the envelope and then push it more and just keep pushing like. And he attacks from like different angles. Like you'll get a question out of the blue and it just continues. Like you just get so much more information instead of you just having 10 things you want to talk about. And when yeah. you're done with that, you're it's over. No, he yeah. lets it organically kind of develop. And he's very good at like navigating that type of he's got space. Really, really high and really developed like uh, emotional intelligence. Yeah. So Joe Rogan is very able to sit across from anyone and ask them the, the question that me as the viewer, just me listening, I want to know. And he says like, almost a successor, succession of perfect questions. I'm like, I'm glad we're going down this route. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't ask the wrong question. Right. Or, you don't get bored by it. No. It's like, oh, I'm not interested yeah. in this part of it. And that tends to... The problem with Joe Rogan is he does repeat himself a lot. But that's why you choose the right interesting guest and let the guest talk and, the go- and then right. you learn right. a lot. Yeah, and he's good at that too. Just letting them ramble on about... Or not ramble sometimes, no, but it's, yeah. sometimes he has guests that want to speak. Without, there's not yeah. like 30 seconds or less. What What do you think? No, yeah. no this yeah. So Guy Ritchie, um, you know, talks about all these movies he's he's directed, and Joe Rogan says to him like, "Hey, you make gangster movies, like or at least you used to." 
how come you don't make any more gangster movies? And this this interview took place in 2017 when they're trying to promote King Arthur. Okay. And this is right off the kick of, um, you know, TV shows are booming. I mean, they still are, Netflix series and stuff like that. And so Guy Ritchie's response was, I think the days of the gangster movie have gone away, and that's more belongs to TV shows because it's, it's not meant for the big screen. Right. The big screen is supposed to be huge epic fantasies and, you know, larger than life stories like marvel you know and, and he's partly right but then his movie didn't hit with the audiences whereas this this one 2019 the gentleman he went back to his roots he made a gangster movie and we remembered why we love you so much yes yep. and this one is probably the best movie i don't know i i probably like lock stock and two smoking barrels and snatch better but this was a really good gangster movie. It was a fun movie. Snatch is the one where they uh, abduct dogs. They're dog watchers. No, I'm no, it's a uh, boxing. It takes, it's like about gypsies. Like I think Brad Pitt plays. Oh, maybe I haven't seen it. I thought I'd seen it. Snatch is an old movie, dude. Yeah, it's grainy. It's. Uh, then I definitely haven't seen it. Yeah, it's just like low, low English culture, like, uh, with the Cockney accents and the fights at the pub and like uh, uh yeah. train spotting yeah okay yeah similar like similar vibes to that i'm sure anybody from that area would cringe if they heard the two because they're probably like totally different people like i think we don't know what we're talking about like welsh or scottish or something <laughs> yeah. for train spotting and it's english for uh for lock stock and two smoking barrels and even then there's certain types of english like there's a lot of gangs in that movie right and so they're different gangs are fighting each other and there's that comes up in the gentleman where you have different gangs of people with different leaders and fighting with each other all right um it's very similar to ozark where um you know you have like the mexican cartel then you have the local kc uh kansas city mob mob and fbi yeah like you have all these yeah and then the cops are their own gang and they're corrupt and they're you know they turn a blind eye oh, yeah the stuff. locals you have and yeah yeah you have of course the birds and yeah. yeah so on this interview he brought up a lot of really interesting things and um guy Ritchie claims he's a storyteller so he's his job his profession is just he's just chosen movies but it's really to tell the age-old stories and and his claim is all stories are the same narrative which i I disagreed with him when he said it, but, you know, sort of to his point, it's every story that you can think of is self versus the world. So he thinks you are a certain person inside the quiet person that when no one's listening in the world, the world outside is a separate entity. It's very loud, very, it's always telling you what you should be and what you are, but you know inside who you really should be and you take ownership and you act in the world and that's how he follows his characters with his movies that they act according to themselves um like is, is that does that make sense yeah. is that so oh, yeah, i mean you see you see it in most of the characters like the assistant he's always trying to help mcconaughey i don't remember the character names right now uh yeah the there was the assistant so the main character on uh quick overview of of the movie i guess is uh it's about an american businessman who matthew mcconaughey who's in case you haven't seen it michael uh we've got mickey and he comes over he's a weed dealer and he takes over the uk he's the number one weed dealer becomes this crime boss with all these people and so i would say the main character of the movie though is um his assistant charlie hunnam charlie hunnam the that's, that's the actor's name yeah. i don't remember his character name yeah but he's the assistant and kind of the whole story is told through his yeah. his eyes i mean the whole story bit. is literally told to him and we get to watch hugh uh hugh grant and him interact the whole, you know he's telling us the story through their slightly drunken <laughs> yeah yeah interactions yeah um and so in the interview guy Ritchie talks about the suit and he says the suit is a uh, is a man's choice of dress and and it's not necessarily just like the generic suit either it's not like white shirt tie and a coat like a suit to, a suit can be 
a suit can be just like a nice vest with a a good a good tie and you know slacks and and proper shoes but there's all there's a lot of pieces that can be used as a suit it's not necessarily just your generic type thing because he's not always wearing a suit even mcconaughey is wearing like a uh, I noticed a polo with yeah. a jacket. Yeah. So, but it always looks nice. Yeah. All the, throughout oh the no, they're movie. definitely all dapper English folk. Yeah, and uh, Guy Ritchie's definitely trying to tell something that his whole thing is: you have to be the master in your own kingdom, and whatever your kingdom is, is what's around you that you can influence to be better. So this is kind of the extreme ownership um, aspect of it, and so I think he's trying to tell, like a masculine how a man should act in the world as a story i think that's the theme throughout all his movies it was definitely the theme with king arthur and um lock stock and two smoking barrels is is about you know the low lives of english society still acting in a way that they're they're out for their own they're they're protecting their kingdoms selfish yeah but one difference i i saw American crime stories, of which we've covered a lot on this channel, like Ozark or Killing Them Softly or Shimmer Lake, have very like unlikable, nasty characters, and they're all tragic. They all are very flawed, and you're almost not... happy to see him die or yeah. or go. Or like Ozark, even our main characters, they're doing ugh stuff, dirty stuff, just. And he's still weirdly rooting for them. Yeah. Like, even in House of Cards, like, we're rooting for Kevin Spacey, even though he's kind of, like, a bad guy. Yeah. And it's very, it's very, it's cynical. And it's presented in sometimes a funny way. But American crime stories generally tend to be tragic and cynical. They don't have happy endings. And that's kind of the dark and grittiness. Yep. And Guy Ritchie with the English version of this, his characters are the same types of people they're criminals they're dirty they're but they're not flawed they well they have flaws but they're good like they're heroes and they try to they're loyal they try to do the right thing uh the the men in the gentlemen try to act the way a gentleman would even though you're um involved in crime and yep. dealing drugs and or you're at war with someone or dealing with someone you don't like it's all very let's sit down very posh very uh uh cultured i guess yeah or civil it's, it's very, very civil. civil instead of like americans would just be like there's no rules there's you and then start a fight or something yeah yeah we've got the that wild like no rules fuck you i'm gonna do it my way like fuck you pay me at the end of killing him softly that's ah oh, such a good ending scene everyone's out for themselves very individualistic um but yeah, those are those are kind of the themes I picked up. Um, it's very interesting to see him tell his story. This movie was entertaining. Oh yeah, I was cracking up. I was. You're laughing. You're you're liking the, people. The action was like interesting to watch. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't done like some action films are done where you can tell that it's poorly made or that yeah. they use a lot of cheats to like, you know, quick cuts and all that stuff that it's we've discussed many times. Yeah, yeah, or bullshit action scenes, and yeah. then. You're you're always like trying to balance the good parts of like the drama or whatever it may be, and then when your action falls short, it brings the whole movie down. Whereas this one, they complement each other very well. Yeah. She's shooting him in the head and the little pea shooter, and it like oh it doesn't do anything, and then he falls down anyway. It's like still action, but it's not all flash and explosions and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and just the the style of the the storytelling beats, it's um. They, they take the story within a story within a story approach. And so when, Inception whenever story. you Whenever you do that, you can twist the details to make it more fun with the inner story. The outer level is like the reality. So the outer level, the movie starts as the screenwriter meets the assistant in his house. And the screenwriter has, uh, who's played by Hugh Grant, who's hilarious, uh, he's like usually in chick flicks and stuff and he yep. plays like a very like proper gentleman and yeah. this one he's a skeevy just like just underhanded reporter paparazzi. yeah 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 i'm blackmailing you <laughs> yeah 
and he's he's also gay and he's he's like very like he's hitting on the main character which is yeah. like funny because it totally is swing and miss but it's we all kind of like know the type of person that he is yeah and we all have uh, a gay friend somewhere yeah just like oh dude you're you're being too much um and he's trying to sell him on this story like you pay me off 20 million pounds and i'll walk away and so he's blackmailing him telling him the story and we the audience are getting filled in but what's happening in the story is probably exaggerated in parts like when they're throwing people off of uh buildings did that actually happen it's like no it didn't happen that way and then they go back and Mm. and choose a different thing i see i see you would think that's what the character based on what you think or what the characters think of other characters we get to show this and then we also get to rewind i always love that trick of like yeah watch this and then all right we're gonna reverse it all the way back and we're gonna show you a different timeline per se or what happened before i always well, why appreciate do you, those why do you like that I, I like it too what is it about it it's just uh it's just different most stories yeah. most stories are told you know a to b i like stories that kind of throw at you for a little bit of a loop or they're it it's more interesting you're more engaged because yeah. maybe because you don't understand what's happening yeah and so you're more interested in finding out and good stories will do it in a way that you don't have to ask questions after or sometimes they'll leave you with a good cliffhanger where you're satisfied, like, oh, yes, oh, that's worth talking about because we can discuss what would have happened or what you know, open-ended type movies type. That yeah, type of thing. and I, I love when they bring. It's very satisfying to see something brought back. Yeah. So something will happen early in the movie. This character interaction. You're like, oh, yep, yep. 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 And Marvel kind of does yep. that with like their uh, post-credit scenes. They'll be like, oh, here's a teaser, and then you won't even see like what the teaser was about until the next movie and then even then it's not until like halfway through the movie and you're like that was from that kind of thing so it's like it it triggers that uh that good feeling you had from the first movie and it brings it into that second one so it's the same thing with these scenes is like i remember that first scene in the very beginning of the movie now it's all tied up there's a sense of uh completion in your own mind Yeah. yeah it feels good to have all the dots connect right and everything come together and like you have certain characters saving other characters in the very end, and it's like it's perfect. Spoiler. Yeah. No, I mean we're we're kind of. I I wrote on all the descriptions like guys, mild spoilers. Like we recommend always. Like you should have watched this movie or watching. Or plan on being yeah, on watching mild, it. minor spoilers or whatever. Um, Take our word for it. Go watch it. Yeah. Not right now. Wait five more minutes. So one one thing he says about the whole suit analogy is that um, Ralph Lauren is the designer the company who in the early 1900s sold the suit back to the american people so the suit's been around for years i mean everyone's been wearing a suit but or the version of it yeah but in, in ter- you know and what we mean by the suit is just nice attire it's not physically the the exact man's suit but um he sold it back to the american people but he innovated so he took an ancient idea, or an idea that's always been around, and he innovated it to make it stylish and fashionable, and that way men would want to dress better. Right. And I, he said this in an interview way back, like, three years ago, and now he's made a movie where the he, he has taken the themes of a traditional crime story that he's been doing since the 90s, and he updated it to modern day. He's got... They're, they're, everyone's smoking weed, hip hop, um, social media, gonzo journalism. So journalism that's like underhanded, dirty. Yeah, it's like it's dirty, nasty. It's telling the real story. You don't give a fuck about anyone. You're yeah. just here for the story and and the money. Yeah, and like you know themes that have always been around, but he's he's playing on, he's leaning onto it, like you know. What would be the effect of the top weed dealer in the UK getting his place getting just like put on YouTube and the effects of that? <laughs> like, and you got the young boxing kids in the hip hop culture who <clears throat> they like to smoke weed and make videos and that like that has consequences throughout the story. Which is very relevant to today. Yeah. But he did it, I would say, tastefully. Like, Guy Ritchie's a guy in his 50s. Like, he's. Well, yeah, if he has the appreciation for the suit, he's going to bring that, uh, that it's almost like, uh, 
someone who enjoys fine dining and anything below fine dining isn't worth it. So that kind of like uh, exquisite taste, I guess, yeah. bleeds into the rest of what how you yeah. you know dress your characters and how you approach scenes as well. Everyone's always sitting in posh chairs or you got roll up in nice cars or girls getting out with full heels on and, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what other notes I have. Um, yeah, script writing and then uh, the fact that it's kind of very... I don't want to say this to be insulting to English people because it's not, but it's like right now... American business is booming and the UK is kind of having Brexit. A, yeah. And <laughs> so the theme of an American businessman coming over, running it in his American style and getting to the top and following his journey along. And that, that was kind of interesting because it usually most Brits would make a movie about British people, but they kind of took what's sort of happening in, in the world and, applying it to the the black market yeah everywhere the united states used to be known as like a mixing bowl and everywhere else was a little bit more like native you were a native of your country now more and more places are just becoming mixing bowls like people are spreading out and so yeah it's very modern to be like oh a successful businessman from america is definitely have it made here but our matthew mcconaughey plays he's a very english gentleman he, he grew up there, right? Like in that story, he's kind of like... His character grew up in America. He and established went, that. Went over to, uh, I think it was Oxford or something, okay. and just sold all the rich kid rich kids weed mm. and then built his empire on that. Yep. And here he is in his you know middle age, good-looking guy, ready to retire. All the uh, He's got all the blood washed off his hands, he thinks, and he's ready to sell it. And then one final it. story happens, and yep. shit, gets, shit gets crazy. It makes your character so much more interesting when you give a little bit backstory like that. Instead of just like, all right, here's your characters and here's the story. It's like, no, give me give me a little bit. Like, yeah. All it help. takes is two minutes yeah, of exactly. screen time to build. Although that's like six months character. of production time sometimes to put two yeah, minutes. But, but re- it's worth forget it. all that. It's worth yeah. it for the story, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's Well, some people have it, but you know, there are almost always limiting factors. So, If you're an artist who wants to tell a story, there are no limiting factors. Your budget. If you don't, if you don't have the leeway that Guy Ritchie does now, you do it. Like you shoot that thing. You know, we're talking about like like Damien Chazelle shot Whiplash for ten million dollars, maybe less than that. And look at Whiplash; oh. it's a fucking phenomenal movie. Yeah, coming up soon. Definitely. There's a couple of movies we have in our list that we've both seen recently, so we're kind of like putting them off until they're a little yeah. bit less fresh in our head so yeah so those are the kind of modern themes the old themes that he has kind of the underlying they've always been i have a lot of respect for english culture in this way that they they do emphasize being a gentleman keep keep to your word loyalty like when you say you're going to do something for a friend or even an enemy you follow through and you do that thing and the banter in this movie is like you can't have that kind of dialogue with English or with American. It's someone gets mad. No, uh, no, it's about the, the two characters talking to each other in this movie, the, the, their interaction. We're like, we're like stupid apes compared to like English people, the way they're, they banter with each other. Like it's cause we're so different. I, I don't know like how to have this. Whereas English, like, doesn't matter if you're black or white or Chinese in if you're from England and you grew up like you can banter with other people and that's part of the it's just so sharp and it's funny and it seems natural and it's just yeah hmm. right wasn't that a huge part of this movie is just the dialogue well I think the dialogue more for me was more of like the storytelling but Yeah, I guess Colin Farrell's like interaction in the Colin in the Farrell's diner. Excellent. He's so good in like almost everything that he does. Yeah, in he always does. Oh yeah, I mean, just a good actor. Always like solid. You don't. There's very few examples that I can think of that, or yeah, that I, I can't the, think of that. I call him the British uh, Robert Downey Jr. To me, he reminds me of 
kind of always a good actor and witty and smart and they kind of to me they look alike <laughs> you look like you're uh you must be talented as well <laughs> i don't know i just think colin farrell <laughs> and robert downey jr are similar people um so english values what else uh loyalty being the king and acting like one so you you got to be the master of your own kingdom uh and if you don't own something you're not the boss that's literally like words from mcconaughey's character right it might have been. I mean, this is this. Is, these are words from the, the interview. interview, but that's what I'm saying is that they, yeah. they came up that he has a conflict in his head on, I'm trying to get out of this game, but the king has to, like, I think he calls it the lion. The lion in the I'm the, the lion, jungle. yeah. I'm the lion, you're the, the dragon, and I'm going to put three bullets in your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a great scene. Yep. I still it's like, intense. my favorite scene is still probably with the, uh, Michelle Dockery and uh, Wong. Oh, I didn't write his name down, but the dragon character. And the, he comes dry to the eye. office. Yeah, the dry eye. That's his character name. He comes in and... Uh, Fucking Wong. <laughs> I think it is. I think that's his last is name. Is his name Wong? I didn't, write his, I didn't write his name down. Yeah, but we all know the... Dry eye, yeah. yeah. And he comes character. in. Yeah, he comes into the office and he just like sits down and like, you're going to do what I say. and That whole like... She becomes... Like she has the the power of a man, almost like this is my shop. You know who I'm with. Dude, Get the that fuck was out. A strong. That was a strong fucking female character. Yeah. She was. Yep. She She's owned hot. the room. Hot. Yeah. Even she when I was purchase. watching uh, Downton Abbey, I still thought she was the prettiest. I never she, seen her. She grows on you. Something's growing. Episode twenty six, and you still can't be professional, Michael. You tell me to reel it in, but you're okay. It's okay reel when it you. In, Corey. It's okay when you fly off the pan. The uh, world is noising, and we'll try to tell you. Want to? Nope. I just got facts in case you got dead space. I don't have dead space. I got um, dead space too. You want to play that? Tell the world who you are. English values, gentleman culture, negotiation skill. So something that our the assistant um, had to go to an apartment to extract. Um, a there was a lord lord pressfield who had a daughter who got Press, do you remember his name yeah um who got hitched up with some junkies and so you know it's the it's the lord's daughter and you want this done i'll rub your back you rub mine go get my daughter for me and so he yeah. ends up being the one that has to are but, you sure do we do we have to do this but he enters the room and just takes over he's oh, like yeah. these four junkies are just sitting there you said someone splooshed when they watched that scene? Yeah, a certain someone I was watching the movie with, it was a female, and uh, she was she was saying how that uh, his acting ability and his... Because he's, he's a quiet character in this movie. Yep. And he was a reserved character. Because he's calculating. Like, that's his Ray, job. Ray, yeah. Raymundo. Raymundo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember Ray. That? Yeah, yeah Ray, so Ray. Ray played by Charlie... Charlie... Hunnam. Hunnam? Charlie Hunnam. Yeah. Who was also King, King Arthur. Okay. For... Um, He's more famous, I think, for people like if we say Sons of Anarchy. That's what I noticed. Yeah. Which I haven't seen either, so I don't I've know. I've seen a couple episodes, okay. but that's exactly that's exactly right. So anyway, his character, he like walks in and he's very quiet, like reserved, and he doesn't want this to end violently. He just wants to extract the daughter and let's get out of here. But of course, the young guys stand up to him, and that's when he like, you don't want to push me right now. And the so I got two bodyguards with me. What are you gonna do? <laughs> The dialogue, though, it's the the way the tension sort of mounts. It's he's so he rolls his own joint. He's he likes fifty fifty himself, so he puts tobacco. What does that mean? Tobacco and weed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Did you not know this? <laughs> I'll make you one. Once I have no, time. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I bet you don't. I mean, most of his any time he's doing something in that movie, it is very deliberate. Yeah. And very gentlemanly. Yeah. For Walks sure. in. Grabs one thing at a time, quiet, uh, precise with whatever he's doing and placing. And, you know, when he, the first scene when he's in his apartment and gets surprised by uh, Hugh uh, Grant and uh, the way he dresses, the way he handles the things with with uh, Michael. Yeah. Um, yep. He's a great, like, worker. Very loyal. Yeah. Knows his Doesn't place. make mistakes. Yeah. Unless he pushes them over the banister on accident. But yeah. that was his fault. Yeah. But even then, the way he handles it is like, I'm going to fix this. Like, yeah. Um, dying, 
or we had an accident. Yeah, more like a death. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great, that was a great, great point. Uh, um, so yeah, negotiation skill, banter, returning the favor. So, like if if you do wrong by someone, you go and make it right. Yep. Whatever the cost, I'll do whatever it takes to pay off this debt, or whatever you think is fair. Yeah. How many favors? All right, I think this is fair. We can come to an agreement now, type yeah. of thing. Yeah. There's a lot more like honor in english culture too i i went to an all boys boarding school that was kind of modeled it was um uh the church of england which is the number one it's like it's just very it, it, the history of uh english they, they broke away from the catholics and uh they were they're very you know so episcopalian is what they would call it and this school tried to teach the same values you know young men boys boarding school you dress nice and they had a lot of it. So I, I resonate with that culture. I grew up in, in England as a little boy till I was I mean, eight years old. So like three to eight is pretty formative years before I came over to, to Virginia. And then you go to all boys boarding school. It's just, you know, you, you give respect to the older prefects and the, you know. There's that. There's a, there's a hierarchy here. Yeah, yeah. So. A, a small a very small tight-knit group where you know even at our uh co-ed high school yeah like anything happened everybody knew about it like it's just a tight group and there's group i mean there's just a whole structure about it that is doesn't exist outside of that school type thing yeah 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 a lot of culture shock i'm sure i did the same thing yeah i liked it i missed it in a lot of ways hmm. and i got a lot of respect you liked being um, around a lot of boys no good all boys boarding school was very good um so the like i was there the second year as a as a freshman so i went to eighth grade and ninth grade there but the respect i got being part of the small group of, of boys that had been in there since eighth grade and ninth grade then you get a whole new set of people in ninth grade like most people showing up the first time i had a certain sense of like i was i don't want to say on top but i was just i was already part of the ingrained you're like, on the end yeah, yeah and me and my other friends that had been there we stuck with each other and if we had made it all the way through, the very few people that made it to five years there were special. Like, you know, four years of being in Christ school as a senior is a big deal, but five years, those were... Special award for graduation. Yeah, they always, they yeah. always got... Um, Preferred access. Kind of. It's yeah. just they got a certain level of respect because mm -hmm. you... you Put in the work, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's a weird thing, but that's just... That's how it is. Um, so there's a distinction between English versus british versus uk versus european identities and this movie is very english it's not british britain refers to of course the island so it includes uh wales and part of ireland um you know more about this than i do and in the, U the uk is the bigger version which includes scotland and there's levels of identity and the Brits, well, I should say the English lately, have been uh, trying to reclaim their identity as a country because they're trying to, you know, they Brexit, they left the EU. Being a European means something different than being from England. Right. England is that small country that, that what we do is English, and this movie was very English. Right. And there's a there's a sense of pride there. Yep. There's a lot of scenes of like the London downtown, and yes. you mentioned like, oh, Corey, what is that city? I was like. That's London, 100%. I didn't have to see the eye. The, you just know it's The England. London eye, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could just tell by the buildings. But I've seen enough movies to, like, recognize kind of the structure and the skyline of London. Sure, you so, just know. Yeah. It looks like a very modern city. Oh, yeah. I would love to visit sometime. Yeah. Go in my suit. Go to my pubs. Yeah. Um. All right, wrapping this up. Um. Let's see, yeah. You always do wrap it up. The opposite of like American crime stories, because these these stories have like good endings. Like they're always like it's the character. Good endings for out. the people who deserve it. Yeah. 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 The hero wins, but it's a struggle, and so it's a perseverance to win in the end. So that's a good English value. So. All right, right. That's all I got. It ended poorly for the bad guy, or we think it does. Whatever happened in that freezer the what did you call him the gonzo reporter gonzo yeah gonzo journalist gonzo journalist probably ends poorly for him 
Unless he got the movie deal. Then no one else really got bad. Colin Farrell was hilarious. I think all of them had their like humorous moments. I crack it up. I still I still think it was really a funny movie. Much less be like a gangster movie. It's just a very good mesh. It was nine out of ten from Corey. Oh yeah, I I, I give it a four out of five. I actually watched this movie twice. Yeah, you did back to back. Back to back. Watched it one night. Two and watched it again time with you. champion. Yeah. All right. See you next time. Any closing thoughts? Nope. What was I going to do when I uh, leave the room? I had an idea earlier that I wanted to execute, and now I can't remember it. That's what happens when you turn. Oh, yeah. Shake my hand, Corey. No. Good job. Good show. We'll end it on that. Happy note. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was I supposed to do after, though? I forgot. Run out of the room after you. After I got. After you got got. <laughs>